In August 2015, while Isaac Mwangi of Marafiki Community International was tour guiding at the Maasai Mara, he spotted lands playing with a plastic bottle. It bothered him. To reduce the plastics of the National Reserve, he and his comrades decided to set up a collection center where people would drop these plastics as they exited the reserve. As the plastics piled up, it was time to come up with a recycling plan. When we started collecting them, I immediately started researching. What, what do I do with all of these hundreds and hundreds of bottles that have piled into this mesh wire box? And uh, I borrowed the idea from different areas and I sought to try it out. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to try my first cabin that exists in my head. Uh, and I'll have to find all of these people that can buy into the crazy idea. And I had to jump a few construction workers um, that said it's not possible. But I really wanted somebody who would tell me, let's just give it a shot. And we started putting the walls together. I, I was there trying to do it myself with the guys, making sure that uh, the walls are symmetric. And I had procrastinated a lot with the idea until the first cabin formed. Now, I did not let anybody use that cabin for months. So I stayed in the cabin for months myself, whenever I would come to Masai Mara doing other constructions and setting up our other social enterprise, which is the accommodation, um, that was my home. Of course, what I was waiting for is for us to go through uh, uh, like two seasons, the dry and the wet one, especially the wet one, uh, just to see if anything will happen. So nothing happened. I, I saw no cracks. It was intact. And I decided, you know what? Let's give it a shot with the next one. Located right next to the Masai Mara Olaila Mutia Entry Gate, the Anyora Masai Echo Camp features seven cabins constructed using plastic bottles. During construction, the cabins incorporate not only plastic bottles, but also a wide range of non-biodegradable waste, including straws, broken glass bottles, clothes, and beer cans, among others which are stashed and hidden inside. The first one we decided we are going to use two layers. Two layers means we put two bottles side by side, the next ones, we would do three layers. The reason being, we would want to hide more of the plastic. Uh, one building, when we use that system, we use 5,300 plastic bottles, 500 ml. But that's on either sides of the wall. But in the middle, we decided now that will be a ditch for us to hide anything non-biodegradable. Clothes, broken glasses, pens, glass. Glass is a very big issue here. So we would hide the broken glasses, uh, the crushed beer cans. We would hide everything in the middle of the building. We know we're able to hide about 2,500 glass bottles. Uh, and you know, when we count the beer cans, it's as many as we can. Because we just crush them, we just step on them, and then we sandwich them in one way or another. And they just fit inside so we can hide as many. So we can equate that uh, 5,300 plastic bottles, 2,500 glass bottles, and a lot of other non-biodegradable substances. We're able to hide it within a building. Adding dry sand, the plastic bottle hardens it, converting it into a smaller brick. The cabin roof is made of plastics. However, they use lighter plastics filled with papers or clothes. Local women are contracted to collect these bottles from the centers, business premises, the market, safari camp, and open landfills. After collection, the women have an option to fill the bottles with sand or paper. They earn two shillings for a 500 ml bottle filled with sand and four shillings for a one liter bottle. However, they earn double the price for a paper-filled plastic. From August 2021 to mid last year, the Anyora Masai Eco Camp contracted Sananka along with 20 other women. Hiyo machuvu ilikuwa imetufanya twenda hata mbali kwa tunasurura. Hii makambi yote ni kama tumejua juu ya hiyo machupa. Tulikuwa tunaenda kusurura kutafuta, alafu asubuhi nikimaliza chai na mkia mtoni, kwanza naenda kuchota hiyo mchanga. Kama sasa nimeenda asubuhi kuchota, kesho yake naweka kwa nini? kwa machupa. Hii kuu inanyesha akati hiyo. Alafu nikaeka hiyo chupa napeleka kwa kambi. Akihisabiwa anatulipa pesa yetu. For Sananka, the bottle venture was a major source of income providing school fees and enabling feeding her children. Watoto wangu kabisa wamebadilika. Kuna siku yenye amerudisha kwa school fees, kuna siku amekosa nguo, atujai kosa chakula. So nashukuru Mungu juu ya kati hiyo hakuna siku yenye mimi nimepata shida ni kwa nafanya hiyo kasi. Watoto wangu wako shule watatu. Nikishika hii pesa yangu juu hakuna siku mimi nimeshika pesa kidogo. Ni mimi ndio nilikuwa naongoza na hizo machupa. Kuna siku mimi nilishika 1600. Siku hiyo nikalipa watoto wangu wote mara moja 1300. Kabakisho 1300 
akaenda nayo shopping Sun mining degrades a river because it reduces water velocity, expands its banks, and makes it more vulnerable to erosion and silt. At the same time, the amount of water absorbed by underground aquifers is reduced. As Naro County develops, there has been huge demands for sand, crushed rocks, gravel, and pebbles, important materials for infrastructure and housing construction. This has led to overharvesting in some riverbeds. Mwangi claims that what the women are collecting from the rivers is insignificant. Anywhere we have a ditch somewhere, or anywhere we have water having clogged and then it's kind of dried, there is sand. They're better off picking the sand that is actually within where we are without even going to the river. The river actually involves a little bit of work. When they have to go to the river, it's because uh, they have to commune together. Hardly what we are taking from the streams around us um, is probably negligible, so to say. Constructing and furnishing one cabin that can fit three beds costs about 900 US dollars. Mwangi says it's not only costly, labor intensive, but consumes more cement than a traditional house constructed using chopped stones. The whole expense comes in there. Because remember, I'm using a small brick that is 500 ml of a bottle. I have to put cement around that bottle. So think about the small little cements I'm putting into the layers it becomes more expensive. The labor, I can only go up to five bottles going up. We have bottle one, two, three, four, five maximum. If I go, it kind of sucks. So you have to go and wait until the next day for that cement to have dried up for you to continue. So the labor that is involved here uh, is intense. This interview takes place on the unfinished skeleton of the ape cabin. The Anyora Masai Echo Camp sitting on a 15-acre piece of land has a capacity to host 80 cabins. However, lack of finances has seen Mwangi stall for now. At the Echo Camp, over 150,000 sun-filled plastic bottles are piled up. How sustainable is building using plastics? Everybody thinks building with the bottles is cheaper. It is not cheaper. No, no, no. This it's simply a, a cleanup exercise. The sustainability of these cabins comes from the revenue we actually make. At the end of the day, when we have all of these cabins, then we have everybody wanting to stay in an eco-friendly place, then it gives us the income. Then that income is what we divide to continue investing back into the business and focusing on the water, the schooling, the women empowerment, the health, and other businesses that we want to open for so many young people. In addition to building with plastic, Mwangi can use other alternatives to construct cabins. But will he keep building with plastics in the future to the camp's full capacity? I would rather not build with plastic bottles. There are three, two other systems that I can use to build. Polystyrene and the chopped stones. Uh, the chopped stones would be cheaper than using uh, plastic bottles. The polystyrene is the cheapest because it's free prefab walls. Just put them together, we plaster them. Within 13 days, I have a cabin. For this, I need about 30 days. So already the labor is intensive. It's high because it's a slow process. I can only go as high with a wall, similar to the brick one, only that with the bricks, I can go higher on the wall. Moving forward, we want to probably do two polystyrene cabins and one that is made out of bottles. That way we can get to the numbers we need to get and uh, fish in all the bed nights we need to so that our end game is to sensitize people. Sustainability will come by changing the way people think. We will not change the way they live otherwise. As Mwangi processes alone to continue with the construction, women like Sananka have had to stop supplying the bottles. Sananka, whose family depends on buying food supplies at the weekly market, has had to explore alternative means of income to complement what her husband earns. As ingine naenda kwa hiyo senda na kulia o mama nguo, yu nipate pesa ya kutumia yu wiki kikudia na pata. Inaona mabadiliko yu kuna masiku enye sipate kasi. Tena naenda nga kuni na usa. Now see how what we can do. Now pick a chief square center. Kuni now sanga miambili. Niki beba yu mungu mada now sa miambili. Alafungu niki anda gufilia na kegemea. Kama ni blangeti 
hiyo napewa kama nimefua blanket mbili napewa mia ine. So hiyo pesa yangu naweka tu mpaka siku ya soko ikuje ni niende nifanyie nayo chopi. Enyi mabaki kwa soko kama nimepata pesa nyingi naweka watoto wangu akianda shule atapata school fees. Tena watoto wangu akitaka nguo naenda kununulia nayo. According to Mwangi, the Marafiki community aims at not just protecting nature but also improving the lives of those living in these spaces. How are they accomplishing this financially? What we do is um, family run. We collect money together and we give a story. For example, we have a group that has signed up to come and travel all over Kenya. And once they get to Masai Mara, they want to give a few days uh, to empower the community. And so you find that this, they, they, they will ask what it is that they can do. I tell them, okay, there's 15 of you. Uh, if you all fundraise $100, we will get to do this kind of a project. We have been able to do this, first of all, by digging deep into our pockets to believe, first of all, in what it is that we want to do. Then other people come in and they listen to your story and they want to be part of it. We want people to be able to do things that are sustainable for people and to make sure that when you leave, the wheel is still rotating and doesn't need you to continue being there for it to rotate. Since June 2020, the Kenyan government has banned the use of single-use plastic in protected areas, including national parks, beaches, forests, and conservation areas. Also in 2017, a ban on the use of single-use plastic bags came into effect. Mwangi says he will keep trying to get rid of the plastics he can in towns neighboring the Masai Mara, but he requests that you join him and take the hit with him. I'm passionate about the dangers around plastic. The microplastics and the macroplastics that we are now finding out we are ingesting. Why I'm saying there's nothing sustainable about this, it's a clean-up exercise. I want to take it out of the streets of the towns around Masai Mara. Because kids are picking up these uh, single-use plastics and use, reusing them to take porridge, to take milk, to take beverages to school every day. If you stand somewhere and you watch them going to school, it is sad that they are reusing them. That means in 20 years, the community is going to deal with ailments that they don't know where they came from. And it's because nobody is doing anything right now. If the policy stepped in and the policymakers stepped in and said, OK, we will have zero tolerance to plastic bottles. I'm happy to use the cheapest other alternative I have. But I have to keep doing it because of my conviction because of uh, what I feel as a person, because what I feel for humanity and for the wildlife. Uh, we, what, this wildlife will only survive if we have people who care. So if we wipe out a whole generation, that's it. Outsiders will come and take over. We want healthy communities to take care of their heritage and for our country to be able to take care of its own heritage. So somebody needs to take the hit. And actually, I would ask somebody else out there, come and take the heat with us. Right. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you like the content that we are producing, please do not forget to subscribe. Do remember to share this video with someone else and also you can like it. Thank you so much for watching for the Africa Climate Conversations. My name is Sophie Mbogwa.